Good morning, my lovely learners. Yesterday, I introduced you to pointillism and optical mixing. Today, we will be experimenting with both of those. Let's get to it. Just as a reminder, pointillism is a technique of painting in which small, distinct dots of color are applied in patterns to form an image. And optical mixing is the visual mixing of two or more colors performed by the eye from a distance. Before I start my demo, let's go over materials that you will need. So today we'll need your sketchbook, a pencil with an eraser, paint brushes, you'll need your red, yellow, blue acrylic paints as well as your black and white acrylic paints, a cup of water, and a rag or a paper towel to dry off your brushes, a ruler, and something to put your paint in. Could be a plate or little cups like this, whatever you have. For our lesson today, let's start by drawing three by three inch squares on our paper. The sketchbook is nine inches by 12 inches, so you should have four rows and three columns. This will give you plenty of space for our experimenting today. As a reminder, a little bit of paint goes a long way. So when you're squeezing out that paint to put it in your bowl or on your plate, start with a little bit. You can always get more as you need it. Now, let's begin with the general pointillism technique. Notice with the red, the more densely you pack in the dots, the more saturated the color becomes. If you want the colors to be a little bit lighter, spaced out, you can let the white paper in the background help you with that. And in the yellow square, I used white paint in the very center to help lighten the yellow. So either one works. And with the blue, I wanted to make the edges, the outline of the box, darker. And since the paper is not black, I used a little bit of my black paint to help me out. And I layered on the blue and then a little bit of black, and then I put on some more blue. So it's all about the layers. All right, to get the hang of optical mixing, we will first use our primary colors to make our secondary colors. Remember, our primary colors cannot be mixed by any combination of other colors, but our secondary colors are formed by mixing two primary colors. Notice I'm layering on the dots to make the brain think the colors have actually mixed. It's a lot of layers and a lot of dots. It takes a lot of time, but eventually you get it. And remember, it's, it looks different when you are close to it. So as you add on the layers, take time to step back and pull your sketchbook away from your face and see if the color changes. Now, when I was working on getting my green color with the yellow and blue, I was having a bit of a hard time. I used a little bit too much blue. It was overpowering the yellow. And so I think I should have used smaller dots and added more yellow layers. But it's okay to make mistakes. That's why we're doing this, so that we could be prepared and take some mental notes before we get to our final project later on. As our artist Catherine Bath once said, life is not a race, it is more of an art. So, take your time guys and enjoy the process. With this last, last box, I'm attempting to make orange. I think it definitely turned out well, but again, I was able to take some mental notes and realized that I should definitely add more layers and add some more yellow because red is a very overpowering color. Now that we've practiced using our primary and secondary colors, let's experiment with tertiary colors. These are formed by mixing a primary with a secondary color. It's a little bit difficult 
having to use so many dots and trying to get the color just right. But that's why we practice, right y'all? Your hand might get tired by this point because you're having to pick it up and place it down really small movements repeatedly, but that's totally normal. Feel free to take little breaks when you need them and then get right back to it. The tertiary colors are more difficult with pointillism, but that's okay. Persist and don't be afraid of making mistakes. You always learn from them and that makes you better. And feel free to try out different shapes when you're practicing your pointillism techniques. I finally decided to do some fun shapes in the tertiary colors, but you can do it for every box. I think by this time I had a little bit more practice and I did a lot better with my colors this time. I hope that you guys are able to feel the same way while you're experimenting in your boxes. So for my first tertiary box, I did more of a blue-violet. And in my middle box, I did more of a yellow-green. Still not quite where I want it, but that's okay. And in my final box, I did more of a yellow-orange. Try to figure out what exact tertiary color you are doing. I want to challenge you guys to find three objects in your house and make sure that they're either a secondary color or tertiary color and try to recreate them here on your extra squares just so that you guys can get one extra bit of practice on mixing your colors using pointillism. That concludes our demo, y'all. Thank you for making it through with me. And don't forget to turn in your sketchbooks so I can look them over. Now I'd like to end the lesson with an interesting fact. There is a musical composition created in the 20th century that is also called pointillism. The musical notes are very separated and so it gives a sound texture that is very similar to the painting technique of pointillism. Let's have a listen. Pretty neat, huh? Now, remember, your assignment is to use your primary colors to practice the general pointillism technique. You can feel free to use white and black the way I did. Um, don't overdo it, just add more layers if you want the colors to be darker or if you want them to be lighter. Second, you need to do your secondary colors using your primary colors. Third, I want you to create your tertiary colors using both your secondary and primary. It takes some time, but don't worry. I know you guys can do it. Lastly, find three objects in your house that are either secondary colors or tertiary colors and recreate those here. Don't worry, you don't have to draw the objects, but just practice creating those colors. All right, good luck guys. I know you got it. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.